Hey guys! In the last episode, we used gouache, kind of like acrylic paint, to paint lots of different sunsets. And today, let's paint different winter landscapes using gouache and acrylic paint, but also like watercolors. To create the first painting, I started off by mixing a light blue color using white and primary blue colored gouache. And then I applied it to the top part of the paper and blended it out towards the center with a little bit of water. For the snow area below, I used just a tiny amount of black and the light blue color to create a very light layer of gray blue color and then I blended it in into the sky. For the second painting, I did something similar but used additional techniques. First, I mixed primary red and ultramarine to create a beautiful purple color and then I applied it right at the top of the paper. And then I blended it out towards the center the same way. Next, I used a little bit of yellow ochre colored gouache and applied it right at the center and blended it in towards the purple color. Now we can use a few watercolor techniques such as lifting and remove some parts of the paint to create white areas for the clouds. Next, I added a little bit of white gouache to soften the white areas even more. To intensify the colors, I used a little bit more of the ultramarine and the yellow ochre color and just blended the colors using the white and white technique. Now with gouache, you also need to be careful. Since traditional gouache is similar to watercolors in its behavior, you can also create all sorts of effects such as the cauliflower pattern if you add wet paint next to an area that has already started drying. And this is what you can see here. I added a little bit of purple colored gouache and then blended it towards the center with lots of water. And while I was working on the sky, the wet area slowly moved towards the yellow ochre color, creating this feathery cauliflower effect because the lower part of the sky was a lot drier than the snow area below. The same goes for the clouds. If gouache already started to dry and you add wet paint or water on top, the water will run into the drying paint creating a cauliflower effect. That's why I had to go over the sky a few times to even out the texture, but I kind of like the cauliflower effect it gave around the sun. I also added a little bit of light blue color to the lower part of the painting and blended it out towards the center to make the sunset more visible on the snow area. But if you want to avoid the cauliflower effect and want to create really soft sky and clouds, you need to be quick. In the third painting, I applied blue and yellow ochre colored gouache to the top and middle part of the paper and blended them together. And then I added more blue paint on top to a few areas using the wet and wet technique while leaving out some of the yellow parts to create the yellow colored clouds. And for the snow part, I did the same. I applied a light layer of blue colored paint and then added a few light strokes of purple, blue and red here and there to create shadows in the snow. In the last painting, I kind of combined all the different colors because here we have a sunset where you can't see the sun anymore. So I used yellow ochre and red color paint to create a beautiful orange color to create the lower part of the sunset in a few clouds. Now we have the base for all four paintings. When the paint has dried, we can go ahead and add more details. Now in the first painting, I added a few mountains to the background. To create them, I first mixed a very light blue gray color and applied it to the center of the paper right below the blue area to just create the base for the mountains. And from here we want to make the shade darker and darker as we move forward because the mountains in the background are less visible. For now, I applied a little bit of white gouache here and there to create the snow while leaving out some of the gray blue color. When you apply the paint, you don't have to be super precise. As you can see, I just add a few dots of paint here and there to make the areas look similar to a mountain with snow. If you look closely, it might not look exactly like a mountain, but if you step back and see the bigger picture, it will be more visible to you. Now compared to watercolors, with gouache you can work in layers from light to dark and from dark to light. So if you feel like something turned out too dark, you can still make it lighter by applying another layer of a lighter color on top. 
So the cool thing about gouache, I think, is that you can use it like watercolors, but you can also use it like acrylics in terms of layering paint, working from dark to light as gouache can not only be rather flowy and soft like watercolors, but also opaque like acrylic paint. Hence, gouache is also called opaque watercolors. Now for the second painting, I mix a very dark blue color and created three silhouettes in the background right below the sky and also added a few tall trees on the left. Here again, you don't need to be precise. Just add a few hills for now with a bumpy outline. To create the trees, I wasn't super precise either. I first created lines using a thin brush and then dabbed on the paint here and there to create the texture that you would see from far away. And for the snow, I first applied a layer of light purple color and then used the wet and wet technique again to create a path in the snow using a purple color. To soften everything, I also used a little bit of white gouache and blended out the purple color a little bit more. But remember, if you don't like the result, it's totally okay. You can always play around with gouache and start over by painting over it. So here I spent some time adding shadows and reflections in the snow using dark shades and white gouache until I was happy. To brighten the sunset and to create a few sun rays, I also used a little bit of white gouache starting from the brightest point and then I blended it upwards and added a few lines downwards. Here I barely used water because I didn't want to accidentally reactivate any paint around and create any blotchy areas. And then I added a little bit of yellow ochre colored gouache to intensify the colors around the sun. And that's what I basically did for the other two paintings. I added darker silhouettes in the background to make the scenery more clear, added a few shadows to the snow using different colors, and then I created a few trees here and there the same way as in the beginning. Start off with one shade to create the darker parts of the tree, and then you can add even darker areas to create shadows and brighter areas to create snow on top of the trees. I'm still in the process of learning how much or how little water or paint you should use and when, but I really like it so far because gouache is so versatile and fun to use. Also, I really like to start off with small paintings to test out colors and combinations. In the beginning, I created even smaller versions of these paintings first to see if this will look any good and in the end, these paintings were similar but still looked a little bit different because I used slightly different colors or slightly different compositions and that's totally okay. If you're afraid of messing up a painting or if you're afraid of wasting your paint, why not creating just tiny paintings first where you can figure out the colors, combinations, techniques and other details and then you can use that as a reference for an even bigger artwork with refined details. From here, I just went over every painting to either add more shadows or more white paint to create even brighter snow on the trees. I really hope you like it. Let me know in the comments what we should paint next. In the meantime, you can watch some of my other videos right here. Thank you so much for watching guys, have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye!